I never ever thought that I would find myself at 32 years old without kids. We swam from Alcatraz to San Francisco and neither one of us are swimmers. It was definitely like the scariest yeah. thing that I've done. How many times have you had to bribe people? In Mexico there's random police stops for no oh. reason. He was gonna like take me to the police station and it was gonna be all this stuff and then there was kind of like this moment of pause. You know what this is, I know what this is. Here's a 20. Yeah. <laughs> we had like no food or water. Oh, like, it was all on us. Rain would bring all these crabs out of the ground. Thousands would come out at night. They were literally just crawling over us while we were no. sleeping. I had a worm that came out of my butt, and it was still alive. Thank you to AG1 for sponsoring this episode of the Unplanned Podcast. What's, What's up, up dudes? dudes? And welcome back to the Unplanned Podcast. Woo! Yay! Wow, the energy in this room. I <laughs> love it. Kara and Nate, welcome to the Unplanned Podcast. Thank We're so happy you. you're here. So <laughs> very cool excited. to meet you guys and to have you on. Kara and Nate were just in Singapore, right? Yes. And and they just got done spending four days with the, oh my gosh, I'm going to butcher the name, the Mentawise. The Mentawise, Mentawise tribe yes. in Indonesia or of Indonesia. Yes. Incredible. You guys when did are, you guys land? From Asia. Like three days ago. What's today? Oh, okay. Yeah, we flew the world's longest nonstop flight. So that's Singapore to New York. It's 19 hours. Holy cow. So our bodies, and then we were in central time, and now we've moved to west coast time. I don't always look this tired. Actually, <laughs> I do. I do always That would send tired. me into labor at this point. And you guys have 19 been to- 19 hours. You've been to over 100 countries, 39 of the 50 states. You lived out of a van for two years, documenting all of this on YouTube. How did all this get started? <laughs> it started with saving up uh, $35,000 to go travel for one year. Whoa. That was the plan. Whoa. The plan was never to start a YouTube channel and make this our career. And I Whoa. think that's the only reason that it worked Yes, is because that wasn't the goal. Because if that would have been the goal, it, was, it all happened so slowly that I think we would have just gotten frustrated and given up. Wow. The travel was our number one priority. Like we just wanted to see as much of the world as possible. And that was above all else. Like YouTube was so secondary. And I also think that's why it worked because like YouTube just kind of came naturally. Like yeah. with it, we were so pumped about what we were doing that like we wanted to film everything. Yeah. Now I feel like there's been a shift and like making videos and telling stories is that new challenge. Like travel has become more just our normal life. Yeah. Like, it's crazy to say, but like that just kind of is what we do now it's it's not as like oh my gosh we're traveling this is crazy like let's get the camera out so it's like before the challenge was like figuring out how to travel without any money and yeah. now it's like how do we tell the best story wow so it's really shifted like our journey has been crazy but it's and been do awesome you, do you guys own a home like do you actually have a house anywhere we have been we the closest the, van. the closest thing we have to a house is the van that's sitting in my parents driveway <laughs> we no way so like literally no house no apartment nothing no. like you literally don't so where do you keep all your stuff it's spread out across the country <laughs> so we when we originally left the plan was to be gone for a year so we broke our apartment lease and okay. put our stuff in storage okay and so we had a storage unit for like five years my uncle owned the storage unit, so we weren't paying for it. Or I think we would have ripped wow. the Band-Aid off sooner. But last year, my parents were like, you don't want any of this stuff in here. It's taking up space. And they literally just opened our storage unit up and had a garage sale. So <gasps> all like, <laughs> we have a closet at my parents' house and a van that we have some stuff in. And that's pretty much all the stuff we have. I love that. It was kind of sad, though, because we got married in 2013. Okay. And obviously, when you get married, you have showers. You get all these new gifts. Like, yes. We had all this stuff. Some things that weren't even opened yet, like unopened wedding gifts in that storage unit. And we left two years later. And so all that stuff was just sitting there gathering dust and had, like, mice poop on it and all this great oh stuff. But, like, gosh. all that stuff just got sold for, like, nothing. And we'll never see it again. But... Yeah, our priorities just changed. Like for the longest time, we thought we were going to come home. We were going to have a normal life. Of course, we're going to keep all of this in storage. Otherwise, like if we'd have known it was going to turn out this way, we just would have sold it all at the very beginning. But that's oh a crazy goodness. idea to like travel the world for an entire year. Like whose idea was that? The root of all of our adventures is Nate. Like I just kind of <laughs> am along for the ride and got really lucky with who I married. But when we got married in 2013, we had never traveled like I had been to the beach in Florida. Like, we grew up in Nashville. I had been to Canada, like, once. And that was about it. Like, travel was not a part of our lives. But 
we really wanted to go on a cool honeymoon, but we didn't have any money. We were fresh out of college. So Nate was in charge of the honeymoon. Do you want to tell your portion of that? <laughs> Do you know what Groupon is? I feel yeah. like you yeah. might be too oh, young. Yeah. My mom <laughs> loves deals and she okay. gets Groupons for Midwest moms everything. love Groupon. Yeah. So, so <laughs> like around. Maybe it's like your Midwest mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Around yeah. the time of our honeymoon, Groupon was like at its peak. And so I booked our honeymoon on Groupon, <laughs> nice. which was definitely a risk because I booked this private island in Belize. So had it have not been good it would have been horrible because we would have been stuck on this terrible private island but it was actually incredible like the Whoa. the group home part of it worked out shout um, out to groupon shout out to groupon i don't <laughs> even know if it's still a website <laughs> but i it was like the first international trip i'd ever booked myself and i booked it wrong so we got kicked off a day early like the day we thought was before our last day they were like so you're leaving the island this morning and we were like no no why where are we gonna go we were terrified but it was full so we we couldn't stay so we literally got kicked off the island oh my gosh so we booked a hotel at the like port town that left off which was not the island that we had been on very different i remember we we checked in and they handed us a can of bug spray and that was like there. There will be bugs in your room. This is our solution. Here's your, here's your can of bug spray. <laughs> oh and we just come from this beautiful all inclusive island. But that night there just happened to be this like lobster festival in town, and we went out and explored the local town. And that was one of the best days of our entire honeymoon. And I Whoa. think that planted a seed for. Whoa. It was really cool getting to see local life in this country. Let's start to do some more of it. And also when we when I planned our honeymoon. I was like just figuring out how we could do it as cheap as possible. Totally. And I discovered a credit card miles and points. And so I signed up for a first travel credit card and used that credit card to get a free flight. And then that hooked me. And that was like my hobby for the next three years was how can we sign up for these cards and work the system and get a bunch of points. And so the first two years we were married, we traveled to 13 different countries using miles and points and just like working the system. See, Matt doesn't, Acts like he doesn't care about points or the travel miles. And look at them. 13 ah, countries on there that. You, go. Sorry, you just need I, to do it right. No, you I were obsessed. I, he gives okay. people grief for it. He really does. No, it was like a full-time hobby. Like, we both had full-time jobs at the time. But, like, as soon as I would get home from work, Nate worked from our apartment, it was, like, fun work time. And Nate would, like, do all this miles and points research. We would go on dates that were travel hacking dates. Like we would go sit at like no Barnes way. and Noble and read travel books and Nate oh. would like travel you, hack. And you used to be able to like buy these gift cards and basically like, it was kind of a gray area. I don't think it was illegal, but like you were basically just moving money around in a circle because like when you sign up for a card to get oh, the yeah, points, yeah. you have to spend like $4,000 or yeah. something. Right. Well, we were, we would literally go to Staples on like a Friday night at eight o'clock and buy these weird reloadable cards and like go home and like, You'd buy the gift card and then you would use that gift card to pay off your credit card. So like you were literally just moving the money in a circle. (laughs) It was crazy Wait, wait, okay, now I want to do that. That 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 was the good old days. You can't do it. No, yeah. They they shut it down. Yeah, exactly. That's so sad. But there are still other ways. Like there are still fun travel hacking things that you can do for dates if you want. Those trips that we took with those credit card points, we started meeting people on those trips. And like coming from Tennessee, nobody took like a year between high school and college to go like a gap year to go figure out what they wanted to do with their Mm -hmm. life. Like it's very common in Europe. And we started meeting all these people who were like traveling for six months or traveling for a year. And that's kind of like what opened our mind to this being a possibility. I love that. And so that's ultimately what inspired the year long trip around the world. Okay. Here's my, my question for you. Cause like, I love meeting people from all over the world. I love meeting people who, I don't know, have just like a totally different background. And do like what you guys mentioned, that that whole sporadic unplanned festival, lobster festival you mm-hmm. said in Belize, that sounds so fun. But then my holdup though is like, I don't know, coming from, I'm, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and some people are like, oh my gosh, St. Louis, it's so dangerous. It's like, <laughs> St. Louis is not dangerous. Like, sure, there's dangerous parts, but like, there's, it's very, very safe. And I feel like everywhere in the world has that. There's always- Well, if you know, if you're like a resident, you know what to do, where to go, where not to go. Exactly. And so like, when I go to other countries, it's not that I'm like scared. I'm just like, I have literally no freaking clue, like which parts are the safe parts and which parts are not the safe parts. Mm -hmm. So then how did you feel comfortable? Like, oh, this is, let's just go out and like go to this lobster festival. Like, how did you, how did you know it was safe? I guess. I think that's kind of the beauty of it is we were just like (laughs) so blissfully unaware. Like we were just so fresh to everything that we were pretty wide eyed. Like when we got kicked off our island and went to mainland Belize, like it is not honeymoon vibes over there. (laughs) 
And I was like, what is going on? This is a disaster. But then, yeah, I just remember going out to the beach. They had all these like lights strung up and it was only locals. Like I'm pretty sure we were the only foreigners there. And it was a little intimidating at first just because we'd never been in that scenario before yeah but then yeah we got a cocktail we ate some lobster we made new friends there was music playing and it just made me realize that we're all the same like of yeah. course there are places that are sketchier than other places but yeah we have yet to find somewhere that we're not comfortable and don't feel welcomed by wow. the people and yeah i mean i'm sure it's inevitable but yeah, we've gotten pretty lucky. Yeah, That's I cool. think I'm an eternal optimist. So like in the beginning, yes. I just figured everything would work out. And then that has kind of been our track record up to this point is we have found good people everywhere we've gone. So now there's kind of like, there's something to back up my optimism. So yeah. I think we feel just pretty comfortable in most places. Yeah. That's sweet. I mean, you, you can get a vibe for a place. Like there's definitely, totally. you know, streets we've walked down where we've turned around and been like, that doesn't feel like yeah the right area of town that we should be in or you start to walk a little more quickly but yeah nate's also very aware like we don't just walk around blind and yeah yeah just kind See, of i think my street smarts really suck so like <laughs> I, i'm like i'm sure you guys have really good street smarts yeah mine mine suck i'm, I'm also curious do you guys speak other languages too? yeah that was Zero. my question no no way a little None. bit of spanish like from high school so it's not yeah. it's not like we're carrying on conversations but we we have some spanish vocabulary okay for people that have been to over 100 countries that's impressive yeah to it's not pretty even sad. know to not even know two languages fluently but just to just do it yeah. with with one that's that's cool yeah, it's that you guys so learn hello and thank you and then delicious is the third word that we like to learn <laughs> in other countries Cute. that that gets you a really long way it makes people smile and just kind of like opens the door for yeah sure. I love that. That's really cute. I find myself, we were just in Mexico and like, it's just so fun to be like, hola, como estas? No, here's like, what just... happens. He would <laughs> greet every oh, sorry. server <laughs> or anyone that we saw. He'd be like, hola, como estas? And th I don't think they were actually convinced that he spoke Spanish, yeah. but enough <laughs> that they would respond yeah, they in full that. Spanish, like very fast. And then I'd be like, yeah, no. that's as far as it goes. <laughs> <He'd> smile <laughs> that's where like it and be silent, and then yeah. I'm like, mm. they were they were totally testing me. But I really want to learn though. Like, yeah. I, I think it'd be so cool to learn a language, especially Spanish, because it opens up like pretty much all of South America. Yes. So it's that would be my first one I would learn. Yeah. If I was going to take the time, I think it's a lot easier to go to a country like like somewhere in Asia where you don't look like the people because uh. then you walk up and they just assume you don't speak the language and you Im immediately go to like hand motions and gestures and mm -hmm. trying to figure it out. And then like that just works. Like you can communicate so much with just like body language, but it's a lot harder for us in like Western Europe, like in France or something like that, where we could be French. Mm. Yeah. And so Especially you, with your mustache. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could see it. You, you walk up and then it's like, they, they start speaking to you and it's like, okay, am I going to let this person waste their breath? and keep going or do i like rudely stop them uh, of like i don't speak french i don't i have no clue what you're saying but you're yeah. still talking so my go-to places like that is i just open with hello just so it's like we don't have I, yeah. I wouldn't be saying hello if i spoke french and so it's just like let's go ahead and just establish this right now and we'll immediately go to hand gestures <laughs> yeah that's probably a good bet how did you guys meet by the way like what's your what's your love story to do all of this travel together i'm i'm curious how you guys met and what what that story looks like we met in high school no way Sweet. so nate asked me to prom in 2007 Aww. and i said yes i was a sophomore he was a senior he was about to go to college and i was like the fun one in high school like i'd never wanted to be tied down in a relationship knew nate was going to college but also had to say yes to go to prom because he was like a really hot a senior and it was and her opportunity to go to prom <laughs> yeah. you were a sophomore oh yeah so prom was amazing we like i don't want to say fell in love but like we really liked each other and hung out every single day that summer after prom but knowing he was leaving i didn't want to get too attached because mm. i was like he's gonna go to college there's gonna be all these other girls we're definitely not staying together i'm not gonna have a boyfriend three hours away when like yeah you know that's no fun um, so yeah, we tried not to get too attached, but also spent the entire summer together. And like the <laughs> night before he left, I just like broke down, like, ah, like I love you and I don't want you to go and I don't want to break up. And well, we, we hadn't just... even said we were dating at that point. Cause we were like, it would be dumb to date somebody before I go to college. Yeah, so we were like, the, right before we left, it was like, we either need to say that we're dating and like try to do this or it's this, it was a fun summer. Yeah. 
So we made that decision to stay together. But I was con- so convinced that we were going to break yes. up that I had burned. This is back when you burned CDs. Uh, I we're burned old. a breakup CD. Aww. So like, I, I actually, for some reason, I, I've had a very easy life, but for some reason I love like the saddest song on every album, like usually is my favorite, but I've never had a reason to like, really like want to feel those ready. sad songs. And I was like, this is going to be my moment. We're going to break up. And then I'm going to listen to all my favorite sad songs. <laughs> That's hilarious. But, but you didn't never break up? up. We no. never broke up. No way. I know. It, and this was yeah. when... This was, you were 17, no wait, 16? 18 and 16. Yeah, 18 wow. and 16. And he was three hours away and like I cheered. And so every Friday night I had to be at like whatever sports game was happening at my school. And so like we really didn't see each other that much. Like it's not like I could go up to visit him every weekend because I was busy. And, and your mom wouldn't let you. <laughs> my mom was a little protective at the time. Fair enough. Good for her. Um, but yeah, Nate came home every once in a while. And I think that's why it worked for us in the beginning. Like we were kind of forced to have this like, you know, like we just talked on the phone every night. There were no physical distractions for like two whole years, basically. And we really just got to know each other. It would have been so easy to break up because yeah. we never would have seen each other again. It would have been like, we're done. Bye. And easiest breakup ever. Like we wouldn't yeah. run into each other. Like we would have just been completely separate. Um, and there was just no pressure. Like it's Nate wasn't jealous. <laughs> <laughs> we just didn't put any pressure on it and stuck with it long enough that it eventually worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I ended up coming to the same college once I finished high school, and we got married right after. Did you guys get married in college? Or no, right after. after. Oh, right, right after. after. Yeah. Ah. So I graduated in 2013 in May, and we got married in June. See, we we broke the mold and made made our family mad by getting married in college. Oh, you did. <laughs> My brother did the same. <laughs> no, they came around. They they were happy for us and everyone. At, at first, they were like, "Whoa, what the freak are you doing?" And then they they were like, "Okay, this is this is good. Yeah, we, we support this." Oh, <laughs> do you have any when, when like? When you know, you know. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. Like looking back, do you feel like that was crazy, or are you glad you did it? Glad we did. I'm it. so yeah. glad we did it. Yeah. But it is crazy though. Like yeah. I was engaged yeah. at 19. I think about that now, <laughs> and I'm like, that is why my parents had a heart attack. Yeah. Like, of course, mm-hmm. that's yeah. definitely not for everybody, and that doesn't always work out like that. So, I love it. Wild. So, you guys get married, and then you said it was two years after you got married that you started, or wait, I'm sorry, how many years after you got married was it that you, you sent it and did 100 countries or started the journey to 100 countries? Yeah, about two years later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We were actually, so almost exactly two years after we got married, we were sitting at a Dairy Queen. Because we had a coupon, a buy one get one free coupon for a blizzard. You guys are just I like was us. so cheap. We had no money. <laughs> That's me too, dude. <laughs> no, I was a preschool teacher and Nate Cute. like was attempting to start businesses from the spare bedroom of our apartment. Like <laughs> we not were not so well. <laughs> <laughs> so like in the winter time, Dairy Queen would give you these buy one get one free blizzard coupons because who wants to eat ice cream in the middle of the winter? So we were sitting at Dairy Queen, we were eating our cold ice cream, like bundled up. <laughs> We had like just finished up a couple trips like to the other side of the world where we were meeting these people doing these big trips and we were like, what if we did a big trip? Like what if we just decided like one year, put everything on hold and like let's just see as much as we can. Like let's save every penny, every mile and point that we can. Let's go on all the travel hacking dates and just do it. Like before life gets too crazy, we're going to come back. We'll have kids. Everything will go back to normal. But like let's do this. And so we picked a date that night. We were like, one year from now, we're leaving, and we're going to travel for a year, and we're going to start telling people. And that was like the biggest decision we've ever made. Yeah, I think telling people was the big thing. Like That made it real, because once you start telling a bunch of people that you're going to leave and travel for a year, it's a lot harder to back out. Right. Wow. I feel like- And then we left the next year. And you did it. Yeah. Yeah. You you guys telling me that, like that was the same, same exact energy we had when we were like- We're moving to Hawaii. We're like, TikTok is our job. And YouTube is our job. We can do this anywhere. We should move to Hawaii. Like that was like the same yes. energy. Yeah. Um, but a challenge that we faced was like finding community. We didn't like really mm. know anybody other than mm. some people we knew from social media. How did you guys have community when you're traveling the whole entire world? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't think we've slowed down enough to feel the lack of physical community. Like we have just been going a thousand miles an hour since January of 2016. Wow. And the first four years, we had this goal of going to a hundred countries, which was just full on. And we were just having the time of our lives. And in the back of our minds, it was like, we're going to go home. We're going to plug right back into our community. Yeah. You know, like it didn't feel like a permanent thing. Mm-hmm. 
Um, then we went to our hundredth country, came home right before the pandemic, like literally. Whoa. January twenty twenty. We were like, <laughs> we did it. What do we do now? And then it was like nothing. <laughs> pandemic. Um, so we were kind of forced to slow down for the first time, but we were back in the U.S. We had made some other YouTuber friends at that point that we could really relate to, thankfully. Like, I do think that was a huge part in us feeling less lonely during the craziness of 2020 and 2021. Um, but yeah, we have a very strong digital community uh, now. So, so FaceTime? Like, do you guys FaceTime your parents every week or yes. siblings? Or how, yeah. how do you stay connected with people when you're traveling? It's not scheduled. Yeah. I, I think, honestly, I think we're really bad at it. We like, are. I think we move so fast and we have each other that, yeah, we just haven't really felt the lack of community. Like, it's I, almost like we don't have the capacity to even have a community. And that sounds really sad. I think one day, like, we will slow <laughs> down and, like, have more, like, deep connections with people. Yeah. But I really like as like cheesy as it sounds like we have each other and yeah. I don't know what we would do without each other. Truly. I don't know how anyone does it alone. Like if I was doing this alone, oh it would have been over a long time ago. Like it is the only reason we are still able to live this life is because we're able to do it together and like mm -hmm. split the roles. When I'm feeling down, Nate picks up the slack, vice versa. The other day I was like fully out of it, slept for 24 hours and Nate literally went out and filmed an entire video. <laughs> Which by kind of makes me sound bad, but no, you were no, just going to lay in to. bed all day. Happened yeah. to be your anniversary, you know, yeah. your, ten, your ten, <laughs> ten year ten anniversary. Years. <laughs> I'm going to go film this video. You lay in bed all day. It was all I wanted. Something I really like about your videos is like they have like definitely an educational aspect. Like you do a bunch of history and like geography like tied in there. Thank you. Like, do you have a team that's doing research oh. for you or you as the team, the research team? We have finally created a team that like helps us hit all of those parts. Like we haven't always had like cool map animations or like history mm. lessons. Like it was all we could do just to like film the video, but we do have help now. Like we have somebody helping Nate plan the videos. We have very defined roles. So Nate does all of the planning and booking and I do all of the like post-production. Wow. Mm. So like Nate holds the camera. He makes all of the decisions on like where we're going, when we're getting there and what we're filming. And then like everything after that is me. Kara pretty much just shows up every day and she's like, what are we doing today? What, co <laughs> what country are we going to? Literally. But she's been down for pretty much anything for the last seven years. You but, guys make so a good it, team. Yeah, it sounds I, like well, you're a planner too. I think yeah. that's why it worked in the beginning because it wasn't hard because we both fell into roles that we enjoyed. And I think had one of us been forcing ourselves to do something that we didn't enjoy doing... Mm. Because this wasn't like our life goal wasn't to be YouTubers. Yeah. And but because Kara enjoyed the editing aspect of it and kind of like the posting on social media yeah. and I enjoyed the travel planning and the business side of things, we just naturally fell into those mm. roles. And so it just felt easy. Mm -hmm. Does working with your spouse ever get tough though? Cause like you're it's not like you can leave yes. the office, go home <laughs> yes. and then talk talk crap about your coworker to your spouse because your spouse is your coworker. We still do that. Well, not, <laughs> we still do not, that. <laughs> I think not only is it hard working with your spouse, but working with your spouse in a creative way because there's yes. no right or wrong, Terrible. right? Yes. It's all yes. black and white and gray. And so oh, what you think awful. the video should be or what you think the video should be, it's not right or wrong. It's just your preference versus her preference. And, and I, we could not be more creatively opposite. That's so, so opposite in every way. Kara may have succeeded without me, but there's no way I would have succeeded without Kara That's because I tried to like suck all of the personality out of our videos. I like love cinematics. I love uh. like, I didn't realize this until it became a trend, but like me and Wes Anderson have very similar eyes oh, for yeah. like, I love like a nice straight lined up shot. I want to the, the lighting point where to be he'll good. ruin a moment. He uh. will ruin a moment because the lighting wasn't good. And I'm like, we will never recreate that because you just ruined it and no. now it's going to be planned and I'll get so mad and then I'm so worked up that I can't even be on camera anymore because I'm like, I'm mad at you. I'm not going to redo that just because the light was flickering. That was your fault. That was and now that moment fault. is passed and this is where it gets hard. Well, so as a creator myself, I noticed you guys did a very good job of capturing the moment of you guys 
going out of the shoulder of Christ the Redeemer mm. in Rio de Janeiro. I was watching that uh. video and I'm like, wow, you guys must have had like a plan to capture, have a camera somewhere else. I don't know if it was a drone or where you had the camera, but you guys come out of, of the top of the, the statue and it's just like, wow. That, and, and, and the moment was really cool. How did mm. you, how did you capture that moment in that video? There was a lot of pressure on that. <laughs> like anytime there's like a one take, like this is only happening once. It's very stressful because yeah. Nate loves to plan things out, redo things if they don't go well. Drives yeah. me nuts. I love one time. Like I'm like, let's do this. Let's not plan anything. Then it gets weird. That's Abby. <laughs> yeah. So we just discovered this camera. It's called an Insta360. Have you ever used one? I've heard of it. So like we had used a few like versions of like 360 cameras in the past. Didn't love them. It's too didn't, much of a pain to edit. Yeah, it was a lot of work to edit. We didn't really find where it fit in our flow of filming things. And so we just decided like we don't use those cameras. Yeah. Then last summer we were hanging out with our friend Louie and he had one and he was like, oh, check this out. And I think he like went underwater with it. I can't remember what it. Oh, no, we were riding those e-foils. You know oh, those crazy, like, I want to ride circles? one of those so oh, bad. Fun. They're so, so crazy. Fun. They look oh. so difficult. Very. Yes. There's a high learning curve. Really? But it's so fun once you get it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, he had one of those. We were in the Mediterranean. He was making these epic videos, and he was showing us on his phone how easy it was to edit, and we were like, we got to get one of these. And now it's, like, become a, a staple, staple yeah. in, oh. our, in our camera uh, set up. Like, yeah. we don't make a video without it anymore. But the camera but, was, like, really far away, though. Yes. So then how did you get it out so you on put the it on this pole, and you go like this, and it can be, like, 10 feet away, and it's filming everything. So there's really no, like, the oh, let me get the framing right. The somehow. You just hold it, and it's capturing everything. And so for moments that Stop. like that that you can't, like, recreate, it's a really great tool. Because That's incredible. you, like, can't miss the shot. Like, it's just the post- editing that you have to do and you had a drone flying around you guys too right or? we did end up putting the drone up that's right yeah we thankfully that was like a bit we we did get the moment that we like popped out of the arm and kind of had that first yeah. like moment of like wow we're here and that was very like that was real none of that was redone but we did have like an hour up there so we were able to shoot 360 camera um talking to camera fly the drone like yeah we got there an hour before it opened and had like the whole place to ourselves it was just How'd you Surreal. work that out? Honestly, uh, we got so lucky. A hefty donation to someone. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm allowed to say. <laughs> it, took, it took it. So we are lucky. required to say that you cannot recreate this experience, and we really are just very lucky. Yeah, but we it, also it took a lot of convincing to be That's like, really cool. Whoa. But that was so, like the culmination of visiting all seven wonders of the world, and so yes. we wanted it to be yes. special. Yeah, that's, that's epic. That was. I mean, yeah. that really is. Yeah. Which, which one's your favorite of, of the seven wonders of the world? <sighs> I mean, you really can't beat getting that experience, like knowing that that's literally once in a lifetime and yeah. like so rare. But we really, like that whole video, we realized how special each of our experiences were at all mm. seven because yeah. somehow we had found ourselves like alone at majority of them. Yeah, well, we didn't like intentionally go to all seven wonders of the world. Okay. We, just, we intentionally went to 100 countries and in doing so happened to just like visit most of them so most of them was like we're here in rome we might as well go to the coliseum yeah. you know mm -hmm. i see all these news articles about like the happiest country in the world or like the the country with the nicest people in the world i feel like you guys are the right people to ask mm. okay which country has the nice people and or the mm -hmm. nicest people and which country has the happiest people would you say yeah <laughs> We've found that the countries that get the least amount of tourists are always the nicest. Wow. Mm. Because they haven't been like jaded. Ah. You know, like they haven't been overrun. They're not like yeah. tired of tourists. If you over their city. Yeah. Or yeah. like if you live in Rome and you see a tourist, well, there's going to be a hundred more past you that day. Yeah. You can't go out of your way to do something special for every tourist mm -hmm. that you see. But really? in 2019, we went to uh, Kurdistan in the oh, north of, in the north of Iraq. Oh. And so they rarely get tourists. I've and never experienced like anything like that. Everyone before. we met on the street was just like so happy that we were there visiting their country. Wow. And we're like giving us food, like literally just like baking bread and then giving it to us, not trying to sell us a single thing. What? No one could speak English. We would just sit on the sidewalk with these local people and like talk with our hands and laugh and drink tea. And I've never felt so welcomed in a place in my entire life. That's sweet. That's it was the most beautiful thing. And, you know, they had no agenda. Like they just wanted us to feel welcomed. And <sighs> the best thing that happened on that trip 
we had like a tour guide driving us around and you could go up into the mountains and see all these crazy ruins and like Saddam Hussein's house. It was Saddam Hussein's house like, and, palace that had been yes. bombed. Whoa. All oh kinds of crazy stuff. We ended up getting stuck in a snowstorm with this guy. What? So we pull over on the side of the road. He's like, we can't go any further. It's snowing too hard. It's not safe. And we're like on the side of a cliff. This huge tour bus of like they'd Iraqi come from, people. Yeah, they come from Baghdad in the south where it's a lot warmer. So they never see snow. And they actually come not to see Saddam Hussein's palace, but just to see snow. <laughs> yep. So they okay. pull up behind us. They had to stop too because the bus couldn't go any further. Yeah. And they pull out this huge pot and like start a fire and start making this like bean stew. Okay. We find ourselves having this like dinner party on the side of the road with all these Iraqi people eating beans. And we were all just laughing and like not communicating with words whatsoever, but just had the best time. Had and it a was snowball just, fight. We had a snowball fight. It was fight. like, yeah. what is our life right now? Like we're in Iraq having a snow, a snowball fight. Right below Saddam Hussein's palace. But it was just... And that's just the last place I ever would have expected to say, like, we're the nicest people in the world, but they truly are. And I really do think it's because they don't get tourists often. So when they do see tourists, they all they want is for us to have a positive experience. And it was the best thing. I'm literally, like, getting chills over here. <laughs> like, about, about to tear up. That's so, that's so special. Really yeah, special. that's really cool. Going to all these different countries and experiencing all these different cultures, like... How have you guys been able to like remain culturally sensitive and like appropriate in yes, like, your content? Especially as people online, because I feel like it's so easy to make a mistake that you're not aware of that could be something sensitive to a certain culture. How do you how do you navigate that? Yeah. I will say it's it's scarier now than it used to be. Like our first several years on YouTube, we were just so like Kids, kids from Tennessee having no yeah. clue. Like, yeah, I mean, we genuinely, like, we probably did say embarrassing things in some of our yeah. past videos, and we probably did say something that was offensive unintentionally. Like, sometimes yeah. I look back and I'm like, I can't believe we got away with saying that. Yeah. But like, or just going in and being like, ooh, this is gross. Like, yes. we would oh. not do that now. Yes. Yeah. But, but I would do that all the time in our old videos. Yeah. And I didn't think anything of it because we weren't, we didn't have as many people watching. And, totally. you know, we were making videos for like our parents. It wasn't like, we were trying to be influencers. Like, uh -huh. We were yeah. brutally honest a lot of the time, but <laughs> it just wasn't really a thing. Like cancel culture didn't really exist. Yeah. Like well, 10 years I ago. feel like also we grew pretty slow, right? So we've been doing this for seven and a half years now. Okay. And so it's just kind of, there was never really a time where something went viral that just really like grew our channel. Mm -hmm. And so I think we kind of like slowly learned, which was looking back, like in the beginning, would I have loved a viral video? Yes, but I don't think we were ready for it. And yeah. I think it actually would have hurt us more, but it was like our audience just slowly grew. And as you start to get more people watching your content, you start to get more feedback on it. And so mm -hmm. I think we just kind of like have slowly learned over time. Like and not to say we won't mess up because yeah. we probably yeah. will, but. Yeah, I do think it is just naturally easier for us now to be just aware of yeah, yeah. what's appropriate and how not to offend anyone. And in a way, it's kind of sad because I probably would like to be a little more honest sometimes, but yeah. people are scary. Yeah. People are <laughs> no, mean. Can cancel culture is scary. They're I mean, so mean. Yeah. Like, there's so many amazing people who watch our videos, and oh. I'm so thankful for the audience that we have now. Like, I love reading messages and comments. Mm -hmm. Like, it is one of my favorite things to do. Like, maybe it's not, like, the healthiest thing to do, like, people say, like, you shouldn't read the comments, but, like, ours are great, and I love them. Yeah. But there are a handful of ones that made me sad, yeah. and they're just always going to be there, and, yeah, we just do our best not to offend anyone. Have mm -hmm. you ever had any any incidents where maybe you did something that your audience didn't like, or have you almost been canceled before? Is there, has there been something like that that you've ever experienced? Because I know a lot of creators, us included, mm. like, go, go through that uh, mm -hmm. at some point. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think the day yes, that we, we thought our channel was ending was <gasps> at the end of 2019 after we had hit 100 countries. Okay. Like, this should have been the biggest celebration of our channel because that's what we had been working towards on our channel for the last four years. Yes. It, um, it's incredible. Like a hundred. That, that's insane. Yeah. yeah. That, it's that crazy. Is insane. Could we do that? Do you think we could even do 50? I think we would kill each other. I would love yeah. to do that. I know I want to. I think we could do 50. We got babies. We can, we can bring the babies. Back. Okay. Abby's tired. Just give her a minute. Okay? <laughs> Abby, Abby needs tired. like a rest year or two yes. or three maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, but, anyway. Sorry to interrupt you. We'll revisit this conversation next yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> So we wanted to do something special for hitting our 100th country. And so I need to give you a little bit of backstory as to 
why this may have been so frustrating for our audience. So we yeah. let our audience vote on which country should be our hundredth, oh. and they chose Fiji, which was amazing. Very, very nice oh, thank them. you, everyone. <laughs> My mom was like, "What if they choose Afghanistan?" And I was like, "Sweet, like a good reason to go to." Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but nowhere they chose was Fiji. off limits, or we yeah. wouldn't have let people vote. But yeah, we had a list of like ninety-seven countries that we hadn't been to, wow. and whoa, that was what people chose. So we were pumped, but we kept it a secret. And so we didn't tell anybody. And then we decided we were going to film a not a documentary of yeah. our 100 country journey, basically just like an hour long YouTube video, kind of okay. like wrapping up our journey over the last four years that had led us to go to 100 countries. Wow. And the plan was not to stick Fiji at that like announcement that Fiji was our 100th country at the end of the documentary. But at the last minute, we were like, what a better climax culmination for yeah. this video than announcing our hundredth country at the end of it. Mm -hmm. and, and so just keep in mind, like we have no idea what we're doing. Totally like, making it. We up. completely made up everything we've ever done on YouTube. We, you know, we're just figuring it out as we go. Totally. Like Same. we're not filmmakers. We're not storytellers. Like literally we're just two kids from Tennessee who found themselves with a YouTube channel and getting this crazy opportunity to travel the world. Like we were so happy, but literally had no idea what we were doing and put very little strategic thought into this decision. Like yeah. it was like, okay, how in the world do we make this vlog different from the other 800 that we've made the last yeah. year? I don't really see the issue yet. Yeah. Well, we're not there we're, yet. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> we're getting so, to it. So, so Kara we, spent a month editing this video basically. Wow. wow. And we had been posting three videos a week up to that point. So okay. we had sacrificed like a ton of videos to be able to do this like, one I didn't sleep one. for a month. We edited all day, every single day. Like oh I gosh. was exhausted, which meant I was very emotional as oh. well, which will play Oof. a part. So no. the guys <laughs> from Yes Theory okay. had done a, yes. um, a, a documentary and they had done a pay what you want model for the okay. documentary. So they had released it and you could pay anywhere from like a dollar to a hundred dollars to watch this video early. Oh, cool. And we were like, that's a, seems like a cool way to do this yeah. because Kara spent a month of editing time on this. It's been a sacrifice for us, you know, well, and we were excited about it and we we're like, we could do more stuff like this. Like if this goes well and we can do this pay what you want model to make up for the time that we weren't doing anything else because I was busy with this video, then like we could do more stuff like this in the future. Totally. Because like, how cool is it to do like, I don't know, like a bigger project and we've been doing these little daily vlogs Yeah. for all the, all the, years and all of a sudden it was like okay we're gonna make a documentary and this is cool and maybe this is the beginning of our new career of like filmmaking and I, we had a lot of excitement behind it and it just made it feel different and like a finale of this journey that we had been on but at the last second we tacked on like the secret that was we went to fiji for our 100th country and then we made a video announcing this like pay what you want model we said we're going to release it on youtube for free eventually but like if you want to watch it right now here it is and mm -hmm. putting it behind a paywall you would have thought we asked for people's firstborn child <laughs> like it so was i hit upload and then we drove from my parents house to nate's parents house which okay. is about six and a half minutes okay so we get to his house and like check the video that we had just uploaded and it already had like all these views and comments of the worst no the worst things that people have ever said and i was so confused You're like i've worked oh. so hard on this i immediately like fell on the ground in tears like we've just ruined everything we've ever done like Four years down the drain, yeah. our audience hates us. We should have never charged. But at the same time, we still were confused because we said, we're going to post this for free, but this is just our way of well, justifying. Well, and they could pay a dollar, right? Yeah. Yes. I, I think... I'm or, still very confused Looking by back, all. for sure, we made... Like, the way we communicated it, the expectations were completely off. Like, we did a horrible job because oh. we were just making it up. Like... And yeah. this... It, the whole project turned into way more than we thought it would yeah. be. We were just trying to get it out there by the end. And we had never said we're going to do a documentary. We had never said that's where we're going to announce Fiji. We had never said anybody was going to have to pay for it. And then we just released this video with like yeah. all this information at once. And I think what happened was we felt like we've made 800 videos of free content yeah. for all yes. of these people. And so yeah. like we didn't see anything wrong with asking for a dollar if they wanted to watch it early. But all of these people felt like they were the reason 
And mm. to to their defense, they were as well. Like without people watching the videos, we never would have been able to go to 100 countries. And so I think they almost felt like we owed this video to uh, them and then we charged for it and it was manipulative. Gotcha. And um, how it did was yes a very big buzzkill. How did Yes Theory do it without getting... I, I think it was the communication. Yeah, I oh. think and it they, wasn't the culmination of four years of their channel. Oh, either. okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, we see that all the time. Even if we post an ad on something, it's like, oh, oh. my gosh, I used to like you. Now you're just money hungry. It's like we've posted a thousand totally free videos yeah. constantly. Yeah, and it's like this is how you're able to continue making videos that are free is because every once in a while you have to make money doing what you're doing. Yeah. And so. I think like big corporations or like traditional media companies have like, they have like a team of 50 people to fill every role. And so they're aware of like, oh, we should be careful how we communicate this, like mm -hmm. pay, pay, how, what is it called? The pay what you want. The pay what you want model. Uh, because they're like, oh, because if we don't communicate it, it, people could be mad. And so you guys just like, we're like, oh, we'll just let them know real fast. And yeah, yeah. this will be our biggest video ever. Yeah. And, and you had no idea what was coming. Um, so I'm I'm so sorry that happened to you guys. That's not that's not fun to deal with. Yeah, I mean it. It was gonna happen eventually. Like I don't think you can do what we do and not mess up. Thank you to AG One for sponsoring this episode of the Unplanned Podcast. AG One is a daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I've been drinking AG One in the mornings before my workout, and it's fit very nicely into my routine. I like the way that it makes me feel. It just feels healthy and feels good. And my brother also wanted to try it, so I got him a bag. We've heard about AG1 through a lot of other podcasts that have mentioned it, and it's been cool to try it out finally for myself. Yeah, I think the reason it's making you feel better is because as I looked more into AG1, it's a nutrient replenishment, and it also supports overall gut health because there's prebiotics, probiotics, plant-based enzymes in there to support digestion regularity and overall gut health. I kind of think about it like I approach eating vegetables, like something that I'll do often is eat a whole entire oh, bag of peas. Oh gosh. I love to eat a whole bag of peas. I hate when you do this. Or a whole entire bag of broccoli, like frozen, you just like microwave it and it's like boom, and then you just eat it. And I just feel good after I do that. But luckily AG1 tastes like way better than um, vegetables. And it doesn't smell like farts. Drinking yeah. it in the mornings has been has been awesome because it actually, it tastes, tastes better. It doesn't taste like farts doesn't smell like farts. <laughs> if you want to take ownership <laughs> of your health, try AG1 and get one year free supply of vitamin D plus five free AG1 travel packs. Go to drinkag1.com slash unplanned. That's drinkag1.com slash unplanned. Check it out. I didn't know that we were giving all that away for free. That's pretty cool. Well, it's AG1's doing it. It's ah, not us. Thank you. Thank you, AG1. Thankfully, I feel like it went away pretty quickly. Like Nate posted a photo of me very upset and I think Oh. That kind of helped some people understand that like yeah. this wasn't just a vlog that we were just like making you pay for for no reason. It was totally. like a bigger thing for me. And I also think we realized it was our fault in a way and like that kind of helped us get through it. But yeah, we also kind of set us up for that response by sharing very openly our financials for four, four years. years. So wow. like Nate has always been like the business guy and like loves numbers and loves business and wow. like had tried to start multiple businesses before YouTube and then YouTube ended up being the business that worked, even though that was supposed to be the fun like side project. Yeah. Um, but like he's always had this like business mind towards it and I'm just, that is so not me, but like year one, Nate was like, we should start an email list. And I was like, an email list? Who does that? Like, <laughs> Nate, it's like 2018. Like, we don't, people don't email anymore. But, like, Nate started an email list, and that turned out to be this very valuable thing. And, like, you know, he's really smart is what I'm trying to say. Wow. wow. And he's a huge part mm -hmm. of why we get to do what we do. But also in the midst of that, he started keeping track of every single penny that we spent and made from the beginning. So in the beginning, it was, like, losing money, losing money, losing money, losing money, like, every month. Oh, yeah. Then I, we started making money. That's cool. Can, can I ahead. give just a little bit of like yeah, the motivation yeah, behind that? Yeah. I followed a guy who did this for his blog, like when oh. he was like building a website and trying to turn that into a business. And I found that really inspiring. And so six months into our first year of full-time travel, we decided like this YouTube thing's cool. We're loving full-time travel. Let's see if we can extend how long we travel by trying to turn YouTube into a business. Yeah. And so when we made that decision, I also decided to document it through these income and expense reports of this is how much we're spending now. We're losing money every month. But 
follow our journey as we try to like start making money from this so we can continue to travel. That was kind yeah. of like the motivation behind it. And I never thought we would end up making good money from it. And so as we drew closer to the end, we, we hit a million subscribers in our hundredth country. Like the timing of that just could not have been like finishing our goal of a hundred countries and oh, a million subscribers at the same amazing. time was just mind blowing. It was like the pinnacle of our lives. Like we're like, it doesn't get any better than mm. this. But so we had started to make good money and I was still publishing these income and expense reports. Ah, okay. Um, and so I think people saw that we were making money and then we also did the pay what you want thing and they were like, how uh, could you want more? And it was like, yes, did we want more? Yes, but also like we had sacrificed in other areas totally. to be able to pull together this month long documentary. Well, I mean, could, we could have done it for free and the business yeah. wouldn't have gone bankrupt, well, but think, we were making sacrifices. What people don't realize is like you guys grinded for how long? Like you guys grinded for a very long time yeah. trying to make this work, losing money as a right. business mm -hmm. in the hopes that it would turn into a profitable business and then it did. So like you took on this major risk and I feel like that's your reward for taking on that risk. But I, it's funny you mentioned that because I was looking at your website and I saw all those reports. I was like, wow, this is really cool that they like. He loves finance. Stuff. I, I like do. He is, was a finance major. Yeah. Okay. And we loved getting to share it. Like we loved how transparent we could be. And it was just so cool because anytime somebody would like say something about how weird it was that we were sharing how much money we were making, we would uh, just point them to those first ones where we were losing. Like we didn't have any money for a yeah. really long time. And like how inspiring to get to share mm -hmm. that like you can go from here to here if you just stick with it long enough and it just came back to bite us. And it, I do feel like that's the one thing like after that whole thing went down with the documentary, like that kind of, we never recovered from that. Like we always felt a little sad Yeah. that our audience reacted that way and that like us being transparent ended up being Backfire. a negative. Yeah. yeah. Why Backfire. does it always happen that way with mm -hmm. online? I mean, that's why people are scared to be transparent, right? Because, mm. like, you yeah. see the people yeah. that get burned from being transparent, and you're like, oh, I want to hold back. I want to, like, crawl into a ball and go underneath a rock and never share anything. And so I think, like, that's probably why people mm -hmm. are, are hesitant to share. Um, yeah, that's that's crazy. I'm, I wanted to ask you guys. I was, I was watching one of your YouTube videos today before we met you guys, by the way, um, and you mentioned – having to bribe the police in Mexico on your, was it your honeymoon or like what? It was an early trip in our marriage. Okay. Yeah. Cause so I, two year anniversary, I think. And it made me think I'm like, how many times have you had to bribe people <laughs> to get out of <laughs> sticky situations throughout your travels? I can only think of two off the top of my head. And both of them have been police officers that have pulled <laughs> us over while driving. Wait, okay. One, so once driving a scooter in Thailand. Okay. And then once driving a rental car in Mexico. So the Mexico story is when you rent a car in Mexico, they make a big deal about the insurance. Okay. Because you do have to like buy Mexican insurance on the rental uh, car or you will we'll get a ticket or stopped by the okay. police. We had bought it and I had left the piece of paper in our hotel room. No. So like I knew that we were in the wrong like we had done no. it right but i didn't have the proof um, yeah mm -hmm. and we decided that we would drive because we were cheap from uh <laughs> cancun to chichen itza so it's like a three-hour drive and it takes yeah. you to a bunch yeah. of small towns in we mexico we did that actually we did well we were on a tour bus oh. we didn't like drive it ourselves okay. we took the water taxi and yeah. we had a bus yeah that was really cool so so we drove and we learned in mexico there's these it's just it doesn't work like the U S right. Like there's, it's not like if you're doing something wrong, you get pulled over. It's just like, there's random police stops for no oh, reason. Yeah. And, uh, we got pulled to the side from one of those. They asked for our insurance. Um, the <laughs> guy, I thankfully had realized that I didn't have the insurance and I don't, I guess I'd read a blog about like, having to bribe police officers. You probably shouldn't do this. Like, you probably... <laughs> proudest moment. Because I think the more tourists that do it, the more it becomes an expectation. Like, uh, you're just creating a problem for more people down the road and rewarding true. the police officers for this. But I had moved all of my money, except for like a 20, into my back pocket, and I had a 20 in my front pocket. Like, I was kind of prepared for this because I knew there was a chance we were going to get stopped at one of these police stops. Yes. And we didn't have the right paper. That's what you're freaking strategy out at that, that point because I would be... Like, my guilt would be exposed 100% on the outside. Yeah, I think I was okay. I don't remember it being too crazy. It was almost kind of like this. It was serious, and then, you know, he was going to, like, take me to the police station, and it was going to be all this stuff, and then there was kind of, like, this moment of pause where it was both, like, 
you know what this is. I know what this is. It's like, here's a 20. Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> here's my like 20 and my like driver's license. And then after that, it was like, he was like slapping me on the back. Like we were like best friends. Like it had gone exactly how he wanted it to. Oh my gosh. Um, Living in Arizona. Um, yeah, people go to Mexico all the time, and so we've if had you friends drive that, across the border that mm. that have had to bribe the police with like situations yeah. like that. So that's and the one in Thailand. What happened in Thailand? Uh, we were driving a scooter. We were probably supposed to have some kind of license, and it was the and same. You, and you didn't have the license, right? Did you have the whole? The, I'm sorry. Did you have the whole like money situation figured out with like a dollar in your front pocket too? Oh my <laughs> gosh, <laughs> that's kind of like the go to now. Like if we know we're in the wrong doing something, it's just like. That's we genius. don't break the rules that often. Put what, put what we think is a, an acceptable amount of money in one pocket and the big stash somewhere else. Good travel hack. Yeah, yeah it really I is. was just thinking about the time that we were in Italy. Was it Italy? Oh, yeah. This is why I asked the question about, like, are there – how do you avoid, like, dangerous parts of town? Because mm. not that this was we're dangerous. We're suckers. Like, we just we're suckers, get things okay? they saw They saw us come off the plane. They're like, these are the this dumb Americans we're going to take advantage of. Oh, mm. and no. We, we bought them. the ticket for the – whatever it was, trolley, tram thing. The tram – but you yeah. have to, va like, not in the U.S., like, they come around and validate your ticket. Oh, yeah. You yeah. have to go in and stick it in. And we had been on this tram, trolley thing yeah. for... You guys have been to Italy, 60 right? Seconds. Yeah. 60 seconds. 60 seconds, maybe. No, not even 60 seconds. We have our all of our suitcases. Like, we, we we have just flown for so long. He's like, my ticket's me. right here. Yeah. And the guy's, like, acting like he doesn't speak any English, which I think he actually kind of did. Oh, no, no. Oh, he's, no. He spoke English. And he... Spoke he English to us. And, um... He was like, nope, it's not validated. And then he wrote us a fine for, what is it, like 150 euros. Wow. Yeah, it was like 100, 150, 200 euros for uh, not and validating our ticket. And he was yelling at us, like making a huge scene. Felt and so he was like, then they like went over and they were like laughing at us. And we're like, we had just arrived. Like literally. So like, literally how are we going to survive here? We were oh. in Italy for literally what, like an hour? And we had just figured out using. We're like, we have the ticket. We bought it. Right there. Yeah. Oh, so, so brutal. Sad. It was yeah. brutal. Did you pay it? How do you pay a ticket in Italy? We, ju we just paid it right then and there. He was like, credit card? Yeah, like, he wanted to put the credit card in the machine right there. Oh, jeez. He, we, he got you probably us. could have left the country without ever paying it. Really? Yeah, I've heard I feel like we sound like we try to like <laughs> bend the rules a lot. We really don't. I know people that have like parking tickets and they're like, I can never <clears> go back to Sweden. Because oh. like they have like a parking ticket that's really? outstanding. But that happened to us again. Okay, this time it wasn't with the police. Like we were just trying to buy uh, a, a ticket to get on the subway in Athens, and this this local girl came over trying to help us. And I was like, No, 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 it's okay. We're okay. She's like, No, she's like really getting her like getting really uncomfortably close. Really, to us. really close. And I go to put in a. We a, knew she was not being. Yeah. Like, I, it seems sketchy. Honest. Yeah, I put yeah. in a 20 euro bill into the machine and she knew right away that I had done something wrong. It was so going to reject it. She gets in and she like points away and has and her back. And grabs her hand it. Behind her back. She Out grabs, of the machine. I can hear her crumple up the, the bill in her hand and put it in her pocket. And that was like what? our only, that was our only right cash. Right in front of us. But here's the other thing too. That was all we had. All we to had get back to get back to, to our cruise ship. ship that's we're going to miss our cruise ship. Oh no. And she also would not leave after that. So she clearly just robbed us right in front of our very eyes. But she wouldn't leave. She's so she like, wanted more from actually. And so we, we were just like. She wanted more from us. And we're like, you got what you needed. Like, now leave. And she was just like, what? And that we're like, oh, my gosh. You literally uh, just robbed us. And now you're not even like. What I else feel like did you've she been, want? You've been scammed as many times as we have. Really? <laughs> and we, we have barely been anywhere. Like, yeah. Yeah. We've but been on two cruises. <laughs> unfortunately, so as a traveler, I do think you become really jaded to people who want to help. Like, we yeah. pretty much refuse all unsolicited help, uh, it, which is sad because, yeah. you know, there probably is half of those people are genuinely yeah. trying to help. But, like, if I need help, I'll go ask somebody. Mm. Yeah. And it, I feel pretty comfortable if I ask somebody that they're not there trying to totally. prey have on tourists. But yeah. if somebody yeah. comes, like, just because you never know and because you hear so many of these stories. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it makes me sad, though, because I know that, like, there are really good people in all of these countries. And, yeah. and the vast majority of, like, I just think humans are good. I don't know. I, yeah. I just, I truly believe that. But you get that, like, 1%, those bad apples, like the mm -hmm. girl that stole our money. Yeah. And luckily, luckily, we didn't know this at the time, but our credit card did work to buy. I thought we couldn't use our credit card oh, there. Nice. We were able to get a ticket back to get on our cruise ship. But, um, yeah. We were sprinting, though. We were, we did sprint back to the cruise ship and barely got on. But, um, so you Stressful. guys just celebrated 10 years of marriage. Yay. So congratulations. Thank That's you. Really, I'm Thank sure you guys get asked all the time, like with all your travels. And we did briefly talk about this beforehand. Yeah. So I know you're comfortable talking about it, but yeah. like... 
ki- everyone always asks about kids when you've been married for a while. Well, how would that fit into your travels? Is that something you're planning on? Yeah. Or, Gosh, I never, ever thought that I would find myself at 32 years old without kids. I would be the last person, like, out of my friend group and family back home. Like, everybody is shocked that we don't have kids yet, including me. So when we got married, I was 22, and we decided let's have a few years to ourselves, and then we'll for sure have kids in, like, five years. That five-year mark, we were, like, at the peak of our travel and YouTube career that we never, like, could have dreamed of and we're like okay let's put this off a little longer this is kind of a special situation when we said five years we didn't realize this is what we were going to be doing and it's fine like we'll just wait a couple more this won't last forever and then we realized you know 10 years in like maybe this will last forever and we're gonna have to make a hard decision because my whole life I thought I would just wake up one day and be ready yeah and feel like it was time yeah and the last couple years I've realized that like that might not happen and I am just going to have to decide at some point. And the way that I like process things is just by completely telling myself like, okay, this is what we're going to do. And then seeing how that feels like, it's really hard for me to just like think about it. Like I have to just be very extreme about it. So last year I was like, okay, I'm just going to say that we're not having kids and see how that feels. And I'm going to start telling people that we're not having kids. Like in your personal life or online? Uh, all personal. Okay. Uh, we did, mention it on YouTube at one point when I felt like ready for people's opinions. Um, But like, I really just wanted to know for me how it felt. And surprisingly saying I'm not going to have children out loud, like didn't feel as crazy as I thought it would. And I've just kind of started processing like what our life would look like without children. And I don't hate it. Like I, you know, like I love what we're doing right now, but the truth is, we haven't slowed down long enough to really know if that is a void that Mm. I'm going to want to fill. Like we just go so quickly that it's so hard for me to imagine having children. And everybody says like, oh, you can still travel. It doesn't mean that you have to change. And in a way, I know they're right. Like you can definitely still travel with kids, but most people don't do what we do. Like no, and we could any, anything we've done in the last month, could never be done with children. <laughs> no like, shot. Literally no well, shot. Well, you guys yeah. spent four days, was it four days, right, with that tribe? Yeah. What, in, in fairness to people with kids, the way I found that tribe was through a video of someone that took their kids to go stay with the no tribe. So way. it, it so is possible. When they're older, no of course, like several years from now, we can yeah. maybe yeah. Ba- start It's the doing, baby stage. Right, right. Yeah. But yeah, it would be a huge change in what we're doing right now. And You know, it's like every day seems to be better than the day before right now, which is so great. Like we're so happy and loving life and it just feels like we're constantly like having more fun and like getting the next big thing. And I don't think I'm ready to like change that yet. And we just kind of assume like it it could all end tomorrow. Like you just never know with YouTube in our life. And I feel like we're really lucky to have gotten as far as we have. And, you know, I might wake up tomorrow and feel ready and I will be totally okay with having kids if that happens. But I've accepted that that might not happen. And did you not have strong opinions either way on it? Yeah, I really don't have like, I think I've always thought I would be a dad, but I also have never like really been drawn to kids mm-hmm. in the sense that like, I'm never going to be the one to convince Kara that we should have kids because I am not willing to like step in and do 80% of the work. You know, like if I talk us into it, I feel like I'm the one that's going to like, yeah. you know, need, like I don't want to be like a stay at home dad. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. it like, I just kind of feel, I, I don't want to put the pressure on her to decide, but I do kind of feel like it needs to be her. Decision. Yeah. It's very much a team thing, you know? Yeah. So sure. it's just like, I think it's good that you're both like, Open it's really nice that we're page. on the same page about it. On the yeah. same page. I am so thankful for that. But at the yes. same time, like, I wish Nate would just be really passionate one oh, way or really? the Because then I would go with it. Like, I'm a nine on the Enneagram. I don't know if y'all are into <laughs> that. I'm the peacemaker. Like, I'm kind of down for whatever he's down for. And I think that's why our relationship works because he has a lot of crazy ideas. And I'm like, okay, we'll figure it out. I know if, if Nate was like, I think we should have kids, then I'd be like, okay, that was, that's all I would need, honestly. Yeah. It's just for him to say, like, yes, then we would do it. And I'm sure that, like, I would never know 
what I ever would have done without this child. Like I know we will fully oh, sure. embrace it. Like yeah. I don't doubt that if we have kids that we would be so happy. And that almost makes it harder because it's like that doesn't mean that we should. Yeah. Anyway, it's if you just, just had a, an opinion one way or the other, then like <laughs> I could right. finally just be like yes or no and we could just move on. But it is this weight that I carry that I just well, I, I think- just don't know. Like, one, we really don't for sure know that it's even an option for us because we've mm. never tried. Oh, okay. But also just the fact that, like, we've gotten to this point in life where we're, like, thinking so much about this is pretty crazy because for sure had we never left Tennessee and, like, started to do something unconventional, we would have had kids five years ago. Like, that yeah. was just a 100%. path that you follow. You get a job, you get yeah. a house, you have kids, or maybe you have kids, and then you get a house. Like, But, you know, there's yeah. just kind of, like, these steps that you take in life and then... Yeah. We left to go travel and that was unconventional. And now we have this unconventional job and we just realized like you can kind of orchestrate your life in a different way from mm-hmm. what society tells you. And I think yeah. there there's a lot of freedom in that, but there's also um, the pressure of the choices when kind of like the whole world is yeah. Well, yeah, an option I, for you. I, I'm curious if like what how people responded when you said that even online or in person, like were they... Because you clearly would be amazing parents. Yeah. But like you're saying, that doesn't mean totally. that you, Thank you need to have children. But Right. Yeah. I mean, I think people see me with kids. Like we have kids in our family and I interact with every baby that I see in public, like every single one. And I think people see that and they're like, oh, you, but you'd be the best mom. And people are really supportive in that way. Yeah, I think overwhelmingly it's been like a positive response of like, you know, if you did have kids, it would be great. You would be great. Don't yeah. worry. And, you know, like that's nice to hear, but it doesn't really help. Yeah. <laughs> like so, it's nice, but I think it's good help that you're decision. open and like vulnerable in sharing that because there's probably a lot of couples that are in that same position, but do feel like they need to follow like some set plan, like life plan or else like maybe they won't be fulfilled in life. And I don't think that's the case. I'm weird. I just like, I just knew that I wanted to have babies. That's very normal. (laughs) No, that's like, you know, obviously we've all been like recreating for thousands of years. That's a very (laughs) normal thing to do. Like I know that I'm the abnormal one I think it was my urgency that was abnormal. I was literally like, it needs to happen to me. I feel like you, Nate, where I'm like, or maybe, I don't know, I feel like both of you guys, because I kind of- Well, they're on the same page, man. Yeah. (laughs) With with Abby, though, Abby was like, we're having kids, like now. And I'm like, It was like a desperate thing, like- (laughs) But, it was a little scary. But, I, but yeah. we had talked about waiting two years. So after we'd been married two years, it's like, okay. Like, I was just like, holy crap, that happened so fast. But even in those two so years, fast. I would be like, Matt, what if it randomly just happened? You, like, yeah. <laughs> I know I have an IUD, but like, what if it just happened? I don't know. What would you think? Well, she would get sad. She had the IUD in and it would happen month after month. She'd get sad because she'd be like, oh my gosh, like, I think, I oh, think I'm having, like, not to, be, not to be weird, but she's like, my boobs are getting bigger. I, I'm, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm pregnant. And it's just like. Okay, you have an IUD. Like, I really don't. But Abby was like, she was born to be a mom. And I was she, just like constantly. But yeah. see, you know, everyone's just different, has different goals. In their, everyone's life looks different. And it's yeah. like, you're allowed to just. Yeah. And like us getting married at 20 and 21 and then having kids when we did, like people told us that was crazy and wrong, but it was the right decision for us. Mm-hmm. And you guys doing everything you're doing is the right decision for you. And I think that's. That's something that people need to realize is there's not this cookie cutter mold that everybody has to fall into. You just got to figure out what's right for you. Yeah. 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 I do feel like you're so far ahead though. Like we're way older, <laughs> but y'all are like, I feel like you're further ahead in life. You, no, you figured no. out how to get the successful career while having kids. And I feel like we've kind of felt like we've had to almost <laughs> choose and you've done both and you're it way younger than us. That's amazing. What you've no done. shot. Oh, no. seriously. Are well, you so you. tired? Um, yeah, how do you parent and have... Now that you ask... <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Well, thank you. I think that even though we do butt heads a lot, we make a really good team. Yeah. Abby has been a trooper. We've been knocking out podcasts in LA these past couple of days. And I'm like, I'm like, are you sure you're okay? Like she's 32 weeks pregnant. Like I'm like, this is, you're, you're, you're tough. And she's Seriously. just, she's a, she's a trooper. Popping in really quickly. Sorry for the interruption. Just to say, hey, have you thought about leaving a review that's right stop what you're doing right now if you're driving don't don't do it right now just wait until you've parked the car and then leave the review be safe if you're holding a baby set your baby down and then leave us a review you're going to the bathroom it's honestly the perfect time you're honestly yeah wash your hands i love to be on my phone in the bathroom so you could (laughs) totally leave a review in the bathroom but don't forget to leave a review we'd really appreciate it 
and hit the like button and subscribe. Okay, now back to the episode. Something I want to ask you guys though yeah. about I'm bringing up van life now because we briefly talked about it earlier. He always talks about – everyone always so talks about sick. van life, I feel I like. I think it would be so sick to take our whole family and like – just travel the country in a van and see the world and like have those experiences. Because totally. something that I miss about living in Hawaii is we had this teeny tiny little house. We didn't have a lot of stuff and everyone there doesn't have a lot of stuff because everything's very, very freaking expensive. And I love that though, because like you prioritize people and you prioritize mm. nature and just like being experiences. out. Experiences. And it's so much better than all this this crap that we don't need it's better than trying to keep up with the joneses and i want to do that with my mm. family i'm curious do you think am i asking for it if if we were to take you know our two two babies under two out in a van would that be what, what are your thoughts on that what are this your is thoughts? why they're not having children <laughs> I, I think van life is best in like short seasons okay so mm. i would not say sell the house move into a van yeah. and like go for two years and see all 50 states that seems like it, you might be setting Do yourself ever your heart desires <laughs> no he it was, is so possible he, he was at, i'm not saying it's not possible no, he no. was just asking for my yeah, I okay. your advice i want okay. your advice no yeah. seriously like it, you're you're yeah, give it to me straight. I think <laughs> I, I think you could 100% do it. Okay. Uh, we have friends that just did a month in Japan with two kids in a in very tiny RV. Tiny RV. Whoa. Like everything in Japan is just cute and tiny, including the RVs. Like yes. I don't know how they did it. They seem to have a lot of fun. I think it would be very hard, but I will say there is no, no more freeing feeling than van life even compared to international travel like even yeah. though with international travel you can get on a plane and be on the other side of the world in a day yeah something about being in a van and not having to like pre-book anything because yeah. worst case scenario you just park at the closest walmart and sleep there every night totally. like there is so much freedom for two years we just woke up for the most part having no clue where we'd sleep that night and it was just like go explore whatever was close by and seemed yeah. fun and then figure out where to sleep. And that was like having that freedom for two. Yeah. It was slightly shadowed by the pandemic, but for the most part, van life was amazing. Yeah. Especially with all the outdoor time that you get with van life. Uh, Cause like you don't buy a van to live inside of the van. Like it's yeah. definitely nice to have, especially when it's like extreme weather, but like the amount of time we got to spend outdoors, just because we were forced to, especially yeah. if you had kids, mm -hmm. I think would be really magical. Wasn't like, it? I really think it would be a Ooh. great way. And if we wanted, so say we brought our in-laws along because our in-laws <laughs> just moved in with us to help us with our two babies. Like, is there a, would there a van that be that, is there a van that could fit six people, two babies and four adults? Or would I, that not even? I think you're moving to an RV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be Which, an RV. Honestly, or I think an RV. another car. I think RVs get a bad rap. Because okay. they're not, they're very functional. They're just not cool. Like yeah. RV life is not a trend on YouTube. Van life is, but it's the same thing. You're yeah. living in a vehicle. The RV mm -hmm. is just what old people have done forever. And so it's just not going to be cool. What's the scariest video you've ever filmed? Ooh. Like scariest experience or I don't know. What would you say? I have my answer. Yeah, same. Do you want to say it at the same time? Yeah. One, two, three. Alcatraz. Alcatraz. <laughs> wow. Really? Is it haunted? Like we planned it. We swam oh. from Alcatraz to San Francisco, and neither one of us are swimmers. Damn not not, not even that. close to a swimmer. Bro. I would never describe myself as a swimmer. But like we kind of found ourselves in oh my gosh. like during the pandemic being attracted to like physical challenges. Yeah. I think because everything was taken away from us and like Everything was so scary to post on YouTube about travel that we would just like needed some kind of challenge that like we felt in control of yeah. and like pushing our bodies kind of became that thing. It just happened naturally. Like we didn't like set out to do like physical endurance things, but yeah, we were enjoying it and someone told Nate about this crazy swim and so of course he signed us up for well, it. Well, I got an email one day and we had done posted several things and they were like Next, you should do the Alcatraz swim. Oh my gosh. And when I read the email, I was like, nope, no way I would ever do that. Yeah. And then when I started to think about it, I realized that the reason that I wasn't doing it was very illogical, which is I am scared of like deep, dark water and not knowing oh, what's in the water with me. That's scary. There have been shark attacks because there are like seals and stuff. Shut up. Like it's a bay, but like sharks get in it. God. But and it's like, I've heard of that. Swells. I would be crapping like, my pants. It's not flat water. Yes. I would undoubtedly die. 
There's I no way I would make it. Abby can't swim very well, and I have to help her sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you might not make it. I would the die. Good is, in, in fairness, you wear a wetsuit because the water's so cold, and the wetsuit does make you more buoyant. Okay. So it, that helps a little bit. No, I would die. How long did it take you to swim from Alcatraz to the shore, I An guess? hour and four minutes. Oh, my gosh. And that's <laughs> that had to feel like the longest but hour and four it minutes. It was an out-of-body experience. Like, when I think back to it, I still don't feel like that was me. Like, did you I, like, buy checked each out. Other? We had uh, no. a like support boat. Yeah. Um, so okay. we had an angel swimmer in the water with us, making sure we didn't drown. And then we had a boat that was and kind of keeping us, us on course because it's not like oh, okay, no, yeah, the land, jump in. Yeah. You had to like swim like this way, even though like this was our goal. We had to start. Swimming There's a really this strong way. current that comes. And through then the, the bay. current, like I've heard about that. So like it was all I could do just to like keep breathing and kicking my legs. And so the person swimming with me would like keep me on track so i didn't have to think about where i was going i just had to think about Keep going swimming. well i was watching a documentary about alcatraz and people like people that try to escape they die right like they they get eaten by oh, a they shark totally they, get, lived. they get swept out oh you think they I, lived they 100 percent lived i think they're walking the streets somewhere i mean no they're probably like way. 80 now but yeah. no the way. people that we totally. swam with so we both had wetsuits booties um dry caps yeah the angel swimmers that swam with us did it in just their bathing suits. Oh, come on. There are people that like, this is their thing is this cold water, open yeah. water swimming. And they'll go and nuts. swim like 10 miles in this water in just a bathing suit. That's crazy. It's insane. So every time you like think you've done something cool, there's always somebody that's taken it up like 10 notches. Yeah. Wow. But for us, that was the scariest thing. Yeah. We were just so underprepared. I don't think it could have ended badly. Like, I think we did it in the safest way possible. We had a person in the water. We had the boat. Like, if something did go wrong, like, I don't think we would have just died on the spot. But yeah. it was definitely, like, the scariest personal yeah. thing that I've done. And I would never do it again. You like, never honestly, do. if you were like, here's a million dollar check, go do really? it again. I wouldn't do it. Oh, like, I'd do it. Ten, I, I, no. I'd do it for that. I would not. <laughs> 20 million? Okay, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Would you do it, Abby? No, it would be my life. How now much I, would you pay for I my life? I want to do it now. Now that you guys said it was so scary, I'm like, I want to feel that thrill, you know? Oh, it think- was like a drug. Like, I could not <laughs> believe it. When I stood on the land, well, first of all, I could hardly stand. Like, I literally like almost buckled wow. under the pressure. Like, when I stood up, my legs were like frozen. And then I took the longest, hottest bath with a coffee and lavender oil. That was my next question. What did you eat after that? <laughs> Thai food. Yeah, that's my did. favorite that's really yes we love thai and we all wait which, which type of curry do you get do you guys are you guys curry people all of them wait, more is like there a one? noodle person because we're yellow no, curry we all like the way curry. we always we get, get it really? twice a week when we oh, order wow. at our favorite thai place in phoenix they just know they know it's us every time they're like they yep, try to convince us to, get, to branch out and we're like yeah. They actually that's got me to hilarious. start getting... Um, Masa and curry. I get Masa, masa and I like right now. Masa so fire. Yeah. yeah. Kara got food poisoning from that entire Oh, that's great. <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, Mom? wait. We were yeah. going to talk about this. What? Food, speaking of food poisoning. Oh, food. Because you guys are oh, vegan. Yeah. No, 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 wait. no. Oh, okay. Never You've mind. You've had a lot of unique foods that for Americans... Like people here, like mm. there, you've tried a lot of different types of food. We've eaten every organ that exists. Wow. Yeah. And um, you've gotten food poisoning, I'm sure, multiple times. More times than I can count. <laughs> and you wait. also had a parasite. Oh. I did. I don't know if I've ever told this story. I'm not sure this story needs to be told. Oh, <laughs> my I'm gosh. so curious. Wait. So, like, we've eaten a lot of crazy things, and I used to really pride myself in, like, I will eat anything, like, anything, and especially with YouTube. Like, it always made, like, a better video if we ate something crazy. <laughs> yeah. So I can't really pinpoint what it was, or it could have been something very normal. Who knows? But we were in Vietnam in 2019, and I was just minding my own business, sitting at the kitchen table, doing some editing. And I felt this <laughs> sensation no. in my butt. No, no, yes. no. And, no. I mean, it was, like, pretty clear what I was feeling. I'd never felt it before. And when I it was ran clear, to the I would have no idea what the heck was going I on. I mean, it just felt very, like, what you would expect. No. So I didn't even say anything to Nate. Like, I'm like, what is happening in my body right now? So I run to the bathroom. I've seen this in the untold stories of the ER. Really? Yes. This is the worst part. At this point, it only gets kind of better, I think. I kid you not. So so like an insect went up your butt? No, I go in the bathroom and I went like this. 
We and don't I, need a visual for this. <laughs> I had a worm on my finger that came out of my butt. <gasps> yes. And it was still alive. And I literally stood there in shock. Like, what does this mean? What do I do? Are and there more? Uh, maybe. I don't know. So, it's like 10 p.m. in Vietnam, too. No, like, no, there's no. no. Yes. So I took a picture of it, obviously, because I was like, this is crazy and I need somebody to tell me if I'm going to die. I like put it on a little piece of toilet paper and I showed Nate and I was like, what do I do? And oh. immediately like Googled the nearest pharmacy and there was one that was closing in like two minutes. And so I bolted to the streets and turns out the pharmacy was like basically like a window of a building <laughs> that like had like a little like garage door type thing. And there's just a man standing there. And there's a bunch of random like peanuts and stuff. And I was like, I showed him the photo. Oh no. I Googled like a medicine that you could get in Vietnam that would like kill everything and flush it out. And I was asking him if he had it and he showed me the box and he said it was $1 and I said, give me all of them. So I paid like $10 for But you 10. only needed one of them. Like you can only take one of these. I bought 10. They were only a dollar. I was like, I'm just going to take all of them and then surely this will go away. But I started with one and I never had any like symptoms. Like I think a lot of people get really sick. But, like, I had had food poisoning, like, a billion times. So, like, maybe I technically yeah. was sick from it at some point and just assumed that it was a bug and, like, I mean, not, like, a physical bug. but It literally know. was. <laughs> and, yeah, so I don't know many details, but I took the pill and it never happened again. And Wow. But now I, all, I have, like, feelings all the time where I'm like, is it happening again? Like, I, like, always think that I have one now. Like, it, it was traumatizing. Wow. Oh, it was that would be. actually traumatizing. And it was just one, it was only one worm, or did it you see multiple? One. No. Okay. I, well, apparently they like come out when you poop, but they're dead already. Oh, they're already so dead. So I still, to this okay. day, this was like four years ago, I inspect every time okay. I look in the <laughs> We've <laughs> really, we've really gone. Hey. Yeah, Is it okay? <laughs> it was so traumatizing. I'm so scared it's going to happen again. And I don't even know if there are any like long-term effects that like, you know, I don't know if they're that scary. Like maybe you have a tummy ache. They I'm feel sorry. very they elusive. Hate this stuff. I'm sorry. I just. I wanted to tell the story. You needed probably. to get that off your chest. Yeah. And you know what? It's fine. Some people like get scared about travel with stuff like this, but you move on. I will say there was a time in my younger life where I would have said like having a parasite is the worst possible thing I could ever yeah. imagine. And then at some point I realized I wanted to travel so much that if that was the cost, then that was okay. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever felt like super unsafe or has there been something that's happened that was truly unsafe, like a near death experience maybe? We were in a car crash in Vietnam. Oh, shoot. Um, That's but too like you could get in a you could get in a car crash anywhere, <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal. Except that our suitcases got trapped in the back of the uh, car, and we ended up at the police station, and they were having to like cut the trunk open to get our suitcases <laughs> oh, out. Oh my gosh! We have been so fortunate. We have never been robbed. Um, you know, I'm sure we've been taken advantage of a few times. Yeah. I think the close somebody in Marrakesh. We had two things happen in Morocco where somebody was trying to steal Kara's phone out of her pocket. Okay. It was just like a kid. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she caught him in the act and, act and kicked him. <laughs> it was just like a reflex. Like, yeah. He was kind of bumping into me. It was like a crowded area. And then all of a sudden I felt him pulling in my pocket. And the first thing I did was just like that. Just yeah. because I was like, what's happening? And he was like, Whoa. But just kind of like the same, the same thing like with the girl. Like he yeah. kind of like stood there and acted like he wasn't trying to do anything. Uh. And kind of kept following us for a while. So it was just annoying. But then we also it kind of turns into this uh, maze of alleys and we turned down, we were kind of on the main road and then we turned down one that was dark and quiet to get back to where we were going. And then there was like a group of like five guys standing on the corner. And as we turned down the alley, I felt like all five of them kind of like come in behind us. Ooh, that's really scary. And there was like one open like shop or something. Okay. So we, like, I was like, yeah, I think they're following us. And I, we ducked into the shop and then they walked past. And as soon as they did, we like ran back to the main road. But after mm -hmm. we were back at the main road, there were a bunch of people. So I felt okay. like pretty safe. Yeah. But I was like, hey, let's like hang out and see if that was just me imagining things yeah. or if they were following us. And sure enough, like 60 seconds later, they came back to that corner just to like, That's like they were hanging freaky. out again. So I do think like we avoided something there. Yeah. We also got we followed through like a market in Egypt. Um, so we've had like some weird stuff happen, but it's never ended poorly we have been so incredibly aware. fortunate but yeah even if we hadn't like i hesitate to even tell the stories that have been like sketchy or like 
almost gone wrong because yeah. people get so hung up on the negative mm. negative experiences that people have abroad. Totally. Mm-hmm. And it's so easy to forget in our own backyards. Like our hometown of Nashville, literally, I don't want to get political, but yeah. has somebody like get shot every single day. That's horrible. On the news. Yeah. Every single day. And but people aren't scared cities. to go to Nashville. Like, yeah. Why aren't we talking about that? Totally. You know, that's people right. get so nervous to like go yeah. to Marrakesh when like you're a lot safer there, I think. Yeah. You know, like maybe somebody wants to like steal your money, but I don't think you're gonna get shot at Marrakesh. Totally. But in Nashville, that's like very that's good likely. Point. That's a that's a very, very good point. And so yeah, I try not to even tell those stories yeah, often enough. because Sorry. it's so rare. Like we're literally out in foreign places every single day for the last seven yeah. and a half years and we have like two and a half stories where something almost went wrong and didn't. Yeah. When, mm-hmm. yeah, that stuff happens everywhere. So but that's the moral of the story. Yeah. If you're listening to this, don't be scared. These people have been doing this for <laughs> seven years, five years, how long? Seven and a half. Seven years. And this is this is it, okay? Yeah. That's crazy. And just a little want, warm every once in a while. And mm-hmm. I also want to ask, since you've been to so many countries, if you had to choose one place to settle down, never oh, leave, oh. never leave, like where would you choose? Where would you move to or settle down? Because you guys don't even own a home. No. <laughs> I don't see us ever actually settling down outside of the U.S. Like, we haven't found a country that we just, like, are so obsessed with. That it's worth all of the hoops you have to jump through. Oh, you yeah. know, like, it's just, I feel like it's just annoying a lot of times to live yeah. somewhere else. Like, short term, lots of places. But if I was, like, for real settling down forever, I do think it would be in the U.S. And we have been to 39 states. And there's one that we always go back to. Which like, one? Like, we can't get away from it i think for sure if we end up settling down it'll either be nashville just because that's where family is and that makes sense for that reason but colorado i think is like the ultimate place to live whoa colorado we why? love colorado why colorado why not uh we, i mean it doesn't have a beach that's we, kind of my only thing we have friends that live there and i think they've just kind of like brought us into the culture there which is yeah. like go out, do like really hard, fun, cool things in the mountains. Uh-huh. And then at the end of the day, like go have this well-deserved beer and like community with it's the people really, that you just yeah. did that thing. It's with. the people that I feel like have drawn us back. Like That's they're cool. just cool people who all value, like you were saying before, experiences over stuff. Yes. Like, and their careers aren't their life. Yeah. And I feel like that's hard to find in a lot of places. Like, mm. they don't talk about their day at work. It's like, what yeah. are we doing after work? What are we doing this weekend? What are we doing next weekend? Like, that's it's all about the adventure, and that's just kind of how we live our lives. So we really connect with those people. That's I really re- cool. I really love that. We have to visit more. As we, we wrap up, I just, I'm so curious. Like, you're the planner for the trips and, like, things <laughs> going on. Maybe I'll direct this to- more towards Nate, but what's coming up for Kara and Nate? Yeah, what's new? We have some fun stuff. We have a lot of flexibility in our schedule. We're definitely not as planned out as usual, but there is one big thing coming up in July that I'm really excited about. We're going to do Desert Island Survival in Tonga. What? So we did it last year in Panama. So there's a company that orchestrates it and basically you do four days of training and then they send you out on your own beach or island and you have to survive with pretty much nothing. So like oh for me, gosh. I grew up watching Bear Grylls and like survival shows. This yeah. was my dream and it was our video that performed best on our channel last year. So that means I get to do it again. And so they, they're doing it in Tonga this year and wow. my parents are coming. That's sweet. <gasps> I can't wait. That's, That's going to be so crazy. Cool. Yeah. It's one of those things like, you know how like negative memories kind of fade and you only remember the good. Things. Yeah. Like with childbirth, you know, like I feel Mm. like it's like, oh my gosh, this is the worst pain I've ever experienced. And then you're like, when do I get to do it again? Yeah. The survival, like after Alcatraz, I feel like that was like the next physically hardest thing we've ever done. Like I was half alive when it was over with. I lost 10 pounds. I had no energy. Like it was so bad. But like- Wait, how many days? It was three days of- surviving but we had like no food or water oh, like, it was all on us to like find food and water and like we were drinking out of trash like it rained and we were catching the rain and these two liters that we found washed up on the literally beach. i would die i really it was would. the Rainy. night was the worst though because we built our shelter and it was happened to be just this one season where like the rain would bring all these crabs out of the ground 
and they were called Halloween crabs. So they're, they're these purple and orange crabs, and they're about this big. Oh, and that's huge. Thousands that's would huge. come out at night. That's terrifying. And so you'd be while late. we were sleeping. They were literally just crawling <laughs> over us while we were no! sleeping. No, yes. the crabs crawling over crawling your body, over you. eating and our clothes. It's not. Yeah, I was gonna say it's not like you could just sit there and not react because they would eat holes in your clothes. That is. Yeah, wild. you guys really are bad. so cool. That is wild. But like, here we are signing up to do it again, less than a year later. Do you want to go, Abby? <laughs> I kind of want to because I'm like, here's me. I like, I want to say yes to everything so I can have the experience. Nice. But I also think that I'm a wuss. You guys are honestly. Tough. It's one of those things I feel like everyone should experience because the smallest luxuries or the smallest things in everyday life become luxuries like lights like for like months after we did the survival like to be able to see after the sun went down was this miracle like we have lights. that's beautiful and wow. like couches like something to lean back on like you don't have anywhere to sit in the like on the beach you're just like sitting in the sand you're constantly dirty your back always hurts because you have nothing to lean on so just like the act of sitting in a chair was like wow like beds huh. i still get in beds and i'm like wow crabs aren't eating me right now and i'm not getting rained on like there's a roof and it's raining outside but i'm dry like how amazing it just resets like your life it's yeah. amazing like that's the best part of it for oh sure oh my gosh and the views are really good <laughs> but the we views call like the view while you're there or like the views on your video Both. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> i was talking about youtube oh that's it hilarious did, it, it was finally one of those times where we did something that we're really proud of yeah and the views reflected that totally like, usually the weirdest videos are the ones that end up hitting on youtube and we're like why that one like we've done so many cool things like why would that one isn't that frustrating when you like yes. put your heart and soul into a video you spend like a hundred hours on it or what i'm sure you guys have spent crazy amounts of time on videos and then nobody watches it <laughs> it seems to be the case most yeah. of the time for us yeah. that's cool that that one worked out yes yes yeah so that was fun it was a win-win for everyone well kara and nate it has been a pleasure hanging out with you guys yes uh, thank you so, so much fun. thank you so so much thank i, I for truly us. I, I think you guys are awesome i, I look up so to you guys cool. so much really um, do. the feeling is mutual oh, I, I think your videos are awesome I, I think you guys are great people and just hearing your stories get me gets get me excited makes makes me like love our world too and love mm -hmm. humanity and if you guys want to go check them out, I know they have their YouTube channel. They also have a newsletter. What's the, remind me of the name of your, your uh, newsletter? Daily Drop. Daily the Drop. Daily Drop. So go check out their newsletter. It's it's great. They also have Fair Drop, right? Fair Drop is we didn't even talk about that. That's <laughs> that's another company that you guys have. Which do you want to share a little bit about, like maybe the newsletter or Fair Drop? Yeah, I think I'm most excited about the newsletter right now. Oh, so. Sick. Daily Drop, if you heard the miles and points stuff and kind of how we got into travel and working the credit card system and getting to travel for cheap, that's what Daily Drop is all about, is this teaching people how to do that. So we send out an email five days a week, and we're alerting people to the best deals when there's a good opportunity to earn points. And then we teach people how to redeem their points either for cheap or free travel or for like first class experiences that you might not be able to afford otherwise. It's really, really cool. Fun. It's really funny, too. That's and awesome. they're gifts. Oh, it's funny? Mm -hmm. Wait, yeah. why is it? Our, Our writer's amazing. Oh. It's so entertaining. Even if you don't do any of the travel hacks, like it's just fun to read. I love that. Yeah. You guys are doing some really cool stuff. Well, thank you so much for coming out. Thank it was you. a pleasure. And uh, yeah, now we, we say peace out, dudes, to end our episode. <laughs> do you want to say it with us? I'm yeah. ready. Make sure you're liking, subscribing, leaving mm -hmm. a review, wherever you get your podcast. We love you guys. And as always, three, two, one. Peace, peace out, dudes. dudes. <laughs>